Stargazers have been treated to the most spectacular light show across the southeast of Australia in the early hours of this morning. Mm -hmm. This is the Aurora Australis, or Southern Lights, made a rare appearance. We said we'd shed some light for you, and now we will, with the director of the University of Tasmania's Green Hill Observatory, Andrew Cole. Andrew joins us from Hobart. How's, what happens in your line of work uh, when this emerges in the wee small hours. Andrew, how did you spend last night and this morning? Well, actually, uh, Aurora watching rewards patience, and I'm afraid I kind of ran out, and I, I actually went to bed around three, so I missed it. But I had students who, uh, who texted me and messaged me to say that it was the best uh, sky show they'd ever seen, and uh, red pillars going all the way up to the to the very uh, highest points of the sky. Certainly so uh, I'm hoping that it continues for tonight. Okay, so what's the likelihood of that? And, and in telling us about that, Andrew, maybe take us to the cause. Why did it come and come evidently so quickly? Well, the auroras are just the kind of most beautiful aspect of something we call space weather. And so the, just like the regular weather, uh, predicting that exactly is a tricky business. Um, when the sun has a magnetic eruption, uh, the effects can impact the Earth's magnetic field, in this case causing a geomagnetic storm that disrupts the Earth's upper atmosphere and can cause the glows uh, that are seen as the southern and the northern lights. It can be difficult to predict exactly when that's going to start and finish, in this case because there were multiple eruptions on the sun, and effectively the first eruption cleared the way for a second one to get here much more quickly and more powerfully than predicted. And all up, as you put those together, how long was it visible in those very vibrant colours we've just been showing our audience? Well, uh, around here it was kind of obscured a bit by cloud, but also by sunrise. So if you were in Europe at the moment, you'd be seeing quite the show still continuing uh, any place uh, with nighttime uh, darkness right at the moment. Uh, so obviously people could see it at sea, but what about in mainland Australia? How widely would you have to be dispersed to be able to have caught at least a little of these lights? Well, I think anywhere as far as uh, Victoria, maybe southern New South Wales, uh, Western Australia and in, in the southern parts. Um, the important thing being clear skies, no cloud, and uh, away from city lights. And we use the word rare, word rare in our introduction, Andrew Cole. Do you recall anything like this in your experience at the observatory or in this line of work in, say, the last five or ten years? Well, no, not in the last five or ten years. The previous geomagnetic storm of this strength was about 20 years ago in 2003. Before that, you have to go back to 1989. Those kind of events are rare enough um, that uh, people kind of remember the dates and uh, keep them keep them marked down for study. Uh, and what is the probability for you and for some of your students of a re-emergence? I know you've touched on it already, but is there a reasonably high probability of another display tonight, tomorrow morning? Yes, there is. Uh, geomagnetic storms with this strength can last anywhere from a couple hours to a couple of days. So there's a pretty good chance that there'll still be activity in the evening tonight in uh, the eastern part of Australia. Uh, maybe not quite as strong as it was earlier this morning, but certainly uh, certainly worth having a look. And we're watching images taken with, you know, customer level, consumer level electronics and cameras, I imagine. Is it more spectacular if you're looking out with sophisticated research equipment of the type I imagine the observatory holds? So, uh, because we're doing astronomical observations of things you know, well outside the solar system and looking for you know, typically very faint uh, stars and other phenomena, and the southern lights can actually be uh, a hindrance to that. Uh, so that's where we would kind of down tools and go back to the iPhones and the, and the personal cameras oh, I see. to get the best views. So a bit, a bit of a nuisance value. All right, now, just so uh, we don't sort of inflict on people who are keen on these things a completely sleepless night, can you narrow down, possibly, and we won't hold you to it, Andrew Cole, a window where it might be productive to be looking tonight or tomorrow morning? Well, given that things are happening right now and we don't know how long they're going to last, uh, I think as soon as it gets dark uh, in the early evening, 
would be a good time to check. Um, the moon is going to set later on in the evening, so you'll have darker skies and better visibility if people are keen to, uh, to stay up late.